Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call of Devi's Laboratories Limited for Q2 and FY 2024. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. M. Satish Chaudhary. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon to all of you. I am M. Satish Chaudhary, Company Secretary and Chief Investor Relations Officer of Divis Laboratories Limited. I welcome you all to the earnings call of the company for Q2 FY24. From Divis Lab, we have with us today Dr. Murli K. Divi, Managing Director, Ms. Neelima Prasad Divi, Whole Time Director Commercial, Mr. L. Kishore Babu, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Venkatesha Perumaldu, General Manager, Finance and Account. During the day, our board has approved an audited financial results for the quarter and half year ended September 30th, 2023. And we have released the same to the stock exchanges as well as updated the same in our website. Please note that this conference call is being recorded and a transcript of the same will be made available on the website of the company. Please also note that the audio of the conference call is the copyright material of Divis Laboratories Limited and cannot be copied, rebroadcasted or attributed in press or media without the specific and written consent. Let me draw your attention to the fact that on this call, our discussions will include certain forward-looking statements which are predictions, projections or other estimates about future events. These estimates reflect management's current expectations of the future performance of the company. Please note that these estimates involve several risks and uncertainties that could cause our actual results to differ materially from what is expressed or implied. The V slash or its officials does not undertake any obligation to publicly update any forward-looking statement, whether as a result of future events or otherwise. Now I hand over the conference to Dr. Murli K. Divi, Managing Director, for opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our second quarter Financial Year 24 conference call. We are pleased to have all of you here, and I hope that you, along with your family and loved ones, are in good health. I shall commence the meeting with a review of our operational performance. Following our up update to the previous quarter call, we anticipate numerous growth opportunities, particularly in contrast media, Hatan, and products with soon to expire patents. The demand for most of our established generic products remains stable, despite continued pressure pricing pressure. We are actively pursuing our comprehensive six-point strategy and expect our recently filed DMS to contribute to growth beyond financial year 2025. Notably, with expanded production capacity for small volume APIs and reduced lead times, our custom census business continues to garner interest from several customers. The large volume custom census projects are now operating at full production capacity. On the CAPEX front, our Unit 3 200 acre Phase 1 construction project is progressing well, and this greenfield project shall free up facilities in Unit 1 and 2 for new opportunities in custom synthesis and generic products. The plan is to start commencing production activities towards end of Q1 24-25. Furthermore, we are pleased to report that Divis has consistently operated 
responsibly, benefiting the community surrounding our manufacturing units. Divit has actively contributed to infrastructure upgrades, road development, and sanitation system renovations in villages across Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. As part of our CSR initiatives, we are committed to projects that focus on empowering children and women, promoting afforestation and supporting rural health care. Now, Ms. Neelma Devi will present you with financial highlights of the quarter. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I extend my warmest greetings to each one of you. I appreciate your presence as we gather today to discuss the financial outcomes for the second quarter of FY23-24. I am pleased to report that we have maintained uninterrupted customer shipments throughout the quarter, meeting customer deadlines efficiently. Notably, positive developments in sea and air freight persisted in global logistics during this period. Supply dynamics exhibit promising signs with a slight supply chain stability resulting in improved pricing for starting materials. Nonetheless, we remain vigilant and adaptable in anticipation of potential consequences stemming from the ongoing geopolitical and economic fluctuations. Empowered by a robust supply base, optimized inventory management, and a keen understanding of global dynamics. We are well prepared to address any future challenges that may arise. I will now provide an overview of the financial performance for the second quarter of the fiscal year 2023-24. We have achieved a consolidated total income of rupees 1,995 crores for the current quarter as against an income of rupees 1,935 crores for the corresponding quarter last year. And our total income for the immediate previous quarter was rupees 1,859 crores. Compared to FY22-23 ex-COVID portfolio, there has been a double-digit growth for the quarter as well as half year. Material consumption for this quarter is higher at 42% due to change in product mix and pricing pressure on current portfolio. Inventory of about rupees 20 crores has been written off during the quarter. Profit before tax for the quarter amounted to rupees 469 crores. And we have a profit after tax of rupees 348 crores. Export for the quarter is about 87%. Exports to Europe and US is about 68% for the quarter. Product mix for generics to custom synthesis is 60% and 40% respectively. We have a forex gain of rupees 11 crores for the quarter as against a gain of rupees 31 crores in the corresponding quarter of last year. Our constant currency growth for the quarter has been negative at 1%. Our nutraceutical business amounted to rupees 205 crores for the quarter. For the current half year, our consolidated total income came to rupees 3,854 crores and we have a profit before tax of rupees 961 crores and a profit after tax of rupees 704 crores. We have capitalized assets of rupees 91 crores during the quarter and rupees 124 crores for the half year. We have a capital work in progress of about rupees 496 crores as at the end of the quarter of which Kakinada project accounted to rupees 263 crores. On this project, an amount of rupees 76 crores was spent till last year. In addition, we also have advances of about rupees 67 crores 
for the projects as of end September 2023. As of 30th September 2023, we have cash on book of Rs. 3,604 crores, receivables Rs. 1,858 crores, and inventories Rs. 2,969 crores. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. With this, we would request the moderator to open the lines for Q&A. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The first question is from the line of Mr. Tushar Manudhani from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So just on, uh, firstly on this inventory write-off of 20 crores, so how different is this from a typical uh, over, over past many quarters? These are some of the materials that were left over from the COVID drug. So that's what they were, and we didn't end. And secondly, with when this uh, Unit 3 commercializes or production starts by 1QFI25, what kind of OPEX one uh, should consider? Can you repeat the question again? Uh, with respect to Unit 3, uh, where the construction is currently ongoing, but is going, the production is expected to commence from uh, first quarter FI25, so what kind of operational cost one should build in? The operational expenses would definitely go up because we are crea we have created uh, the, uh, we are creating a total setup of unit 3 with all infrastructure so hence there will be increase in operational uh, expenditure and also it will be directly proportional to volume of business we are going to load into that by quarter on quarter. Okay. Is there any broad uh, ballpark uh, number you would like to highlight? Oh, we can't anticipate at this moment. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. The second question is from the line of Mr. Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. So, so my first question is on the growth. Uh, so the like-to-like -like growth, if you consider uh, adjusting for the, let's say, the monopiravir related base, then overall business looks a very strong growth, the way uh, Madam has indicated in the opening remark. And also, similarly, the custom synthesis growth also look on a like-to-like -like basis really strong. So uh, what has driven this uh, custom synthesis growth? Uh, this custom synthesis segment is not facing any kind of inventory rationalization or anything. Uh, is that the kind of uh, understanding one should have? And uh, even if you have seen a very strong, robust growth on a like-to-like -like basis in custom synthesis, what has driven whether your second contract that got started if you can give some clarity about custom synthesis growth. The custom synthesis growth is not just one company or one product. It is distributed over several therapeutic segments. I think we mentioned that one of the growth engine is the big custom synthesis projects from the big pharma, two of them. Now both are geared up and they are fully on production line and you will see the additions in the next quarters. Now, 
ಒಂದು ಸಾಟನ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇನ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆರ್ ಜನರಿಕ್ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಮೋಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ as several of them were kept aside looking on focusing only for last 3 4 years on covid now i think the covid being under the table now all projects have been resumed and that's what you are seeing now and i think you will see in future okay sir uh sir uh, then a related one is that uh, Uh, so uh, although we have seen a kind of strong um, growth in the custom synthesis side despite generics witnessing some moderation or uh, muted growth due to possibly the price pressure what you have indicated as well as uh, the uh, inventory rationalization aspect might be continuing uh, but then sequentially we have seen the gross margin has deteriorated uh, almost like 400 500 basis point and despite the uh, a uh, strong performance at the custom synthesis side is it because of your uh, the high cost inventory or raw material that you have been talking about that is still hitting us or it is the realization in the api side that really suffered what would have contributed to the weakness in the gross margin sir I think uh, Nilma has mentioned the pricing pressure. Yes, there are pricing pressures in the generic. And the, there's no issue with the custom sense. The, and the overall, probably some of the street stocks towards the end of consumption has already happened. All that happened, I think, together. So, i think going forward we should be doing better okay so uh, so just one last question from my side uh, let's say in terms of the custom synthesis business if i talk about a bit see the the industry trend what we are currently seeing that because of the funding venture capital funding issues and all that the small and mid sized biotech companies they are facing some challenge and that is what is impacting the service provider uh, or cro or cmo or cdmo players to some extent and that is what we have witnessed for uh, many global uh, cdmo players also but here um, as we know that uh, dvc is largely known for uh, in the cmo or cdmo it is for the late stage projects and uh, we have seen a very strong growth in the custom synthesis this quarter so uh, is it fair to believe that since we are associated with the late stage projects more so we have not seen any kind of uh, industry challenges in terms of inventory or or uh, 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 slower pick up um, by the customers and all that is that understanding correct sir the we are not working with you know that the startup companies and uh, Correct. small companies needing funding from uh, various institutions we are working with the big farmers either for their pipeline or the pipeline they acquired from some of these small companies yes. so we we are not seeing any of that slow down or wasting number of opportunities okay okay sure sir thank you wish you all the best thank you we request the participants to restrict their questions to two per participant the next question is from the line of mr sham shrinivasan from goldman sachs please go ahead sir yeah good afternoon and uh, thank you for taking my question uh, just wanted some more clarity around the uh, excluding covid opportunity growth uh, which has been called out uh, sir we have not called this number out in the past so if you could help us with what those numbers roughly are so when i do the math using your 60 40 for this quarter for example for custom i arrived at a 765 odd crore number for quarter 2 and i remember last quarter last year last quarter it was around 800 crores 
uh, right? So what is the base that we are talking about? Is it like a double digit growth YOY? I know there is QOQ growth on custom, but I'm unable to see the very strong growth. Uh, maybe it's the base. I'm not adjusting correctly. So if you could help me understand that, please. Thank you. Uh, so the, uh, you can assume that you know the Molnar sales could be around the number that you're me mentioning, but uh, we cannot because of the non-disclosure that we signed. We cannot disclose the actual value of the sales that we have done for that particular product. No, no. But I, uh, what yes, we can sorry. actually say is we did see a double-digit growth. Uh, year on year for the quarter as well as half year, excluding the COVID drug. Uh, and uh, Nilima, uh, ma'am, are you saying this for the custom only? This is total corporate? Uh, if you could clarify, this is please. for the entire corporate. It's not just for the custom census. It is custom census plus generic total sales together. And and if you could just bi bifurcate that between generic and and custom, any co directional color, that will be helpful. Uh, uh, I would love to do that, but at this point in time, we are not, uh, you know, we cannot okay. say more than what I'm saying currently. And, and let me impute, because we were at 48% uh, custom at the, at the half last year. We are at 40% now. So that would imply, let's assume, I don't know, 7 8% is more liberal. I'm just making it up. But that still wouldn't mean any YOY growth on custom. I, I'm just trying to, am I directionally right? Uh, probably. Okay. Okay. So we have yet to see probably YOY growth in custom. Maybe it's coming ahead of us. Would that be yes. a fair? We'll be seeing more uh, from the third quarter, the the sales happening. You know, way where you'll have the clarity. Understood. That's very helpful, ma'am, for that. Uh, just a second question, and I'll stop after that. Is on the uh, pricing pressure that was mentioned in. Um, in the generic API piece, uh, right? I think despite that, on a on a de recently high base, I have like a 900 crore number for quarter two. We have done 940 crores. Uh, I'm excluding obviously nutraceuticals out of that. So 940 crore, five percent growth uh, despite pricing pressure. So what can you help us understand the volume trends here, please? Thank you. Can you just repeat your question again, please? Yeah, uh, Nilima, ma'am, I'm just wondering. Uh, we had a high base growth last co last year, same quarter. 900 crores was the number for generic API, excluding nutraceuticals. When I see that number today, based on your 60% uh, number again, 940 crores is what I have. So we have grown 5% on generic API, despite the pricing pressure that you talked about. So is there very good volume trends we are seeing on generic API? Yes, I would say we are seeing good volume trends in general KPI, but yes, because of the pricing pressure, the uh, the revenue uh, which we would have, say like for example, last year prices, if you would have had this year, the revenue would have been much better. But because of the various pricing pressures that the, that the entire pharma industry is facing in the generic industry, mm -hmm. the volume is there, it's just that the pricing uh, is lower. So that's when you're seeing the revenue is moderately more than what it was last year. Got it, just squeezing one in. Is that like double digit volume growth and like mid single digit price erosion? Would that be a way to disaggregate it? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, thank you, thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Damayanti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my uh, first question is on uh, contrast media opportunity. So you obviously talked about uh, ramp up, which is happening uh, in your business. So can you elaborate a bit, like, uh, what is the progress in the iodine-based uh, supply so far, and what is the progress on the gadolinium-based uh, product uh, development part? That's my first question. The iodine-based... Uh Contrast media, we are doing well. We are already in the two products in for the generic market, I found a Exxon, they are growing well. And also we are entering into the other iodine based compounds. Um, 
at least two of them they are doing they are going to be doing very well on the gallodinium just we are in the final stage of completing our process and once that is done we need to get approvals from the customers to go that where we are on the contrast medium so uh, for gallium based uh, most likely towards end of this fiscal you expect to start supplies and then uh, pick up will uh, maybe more in next fiscal year probably it is more towards the next year than because first the qualifications the sample that would take time so we are looking more at the 25 okay got it uh my second question is on uh, generic uh, pricing pressure which uh, we discussed earlier during the call so uh, just want to understand like in some of the newer launches uh, are you seeing more competition compared to what you had seen in the past that's where we are seeing uh, like overall higher pricing pressure or uh, something else is there uh, like you said volumes are uh, going or demand is steady etc so is it mainly due to competition you are seeing higher uh, pricing pressure and how do you see uh, this trend ahead it is not in the newer generic we were we introduced recently it is mainly in the some of the large volume generic we were doing early from long time there was some price pressure in certain markets uh, I, i think we need to see in the next coming quarters i think it should settle down no when there is little price pressure everybody would like to enter the market get rid of their stock and then the stock will deplete then the everybody looks for a, a product which is not available it happens okay so prices may be uh, in like cyclical move but uh, on the newer launches you said uh, not much of uh, pricing pressure it it may be more like yeah, okay okay sir thank you i'll get back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of mr ravi purohit from securities investment management private limited please go ahead sir yeah hi good afternoon sir uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, since a couple of questions most of the other questions have been answered one is i think in the earlier calls we mentioned about a couple of our projects going in uh, uh, you know commercial in the custom center side in q1 q2 of this year so have they kind of gone into production mode or uh, we are still kind of you know waiting for that and the second question was on the peptide based drugs which i think we had briefly discussed in the last call as well and you have said that we were doing basic amino acids uh, so any any progress on that uh, because that opportunity seems to become bigger and bigger as you know time passes by those were my two questions thank you yeah i think um, i did mention in the beginning of the call that the two big custom synthesis projects they have gone on full scale production now we reached that okay. which you will see in the coming quarters uh the result of it that's your first question second one on the peptides i think we are going to have excellent uh, um opportunity based on these uh, glp agonists the glutide the type 2 diabetes going towards the weight loss all of them requiring large number of Uh, peptide building blocks that peptide tripeptide i think this is where we have done a lot of progress and we we will become one of the major suppliers for it soon okay so how large is the opportunity size for us in terms of you know absolute scale of uh, business but like i think you had mentioned we don't do the apis right uh, but we do the the basic uh, amino acid uh, so is it like is you in your assessment is it like to be a substantial opportunity going forward uh, i mean does it does it like add to all of this i think you know, we have been like talking about a uh, growth engines like does this kind of the scale is as big as one of those growth engines or is it more like a uh, uh, you know like a decent opportunity not like a very large or a very significant one yeah. first of all I think outside China, 
there are not uh, many companies who can supply these building blocks. We are not talking about ammonia acids. Everybody buys the ammonia acids for three, four dollars a kilo. But these are these fertilized, protected ammonia acids with a lot of chemistry involved. And there are not many companies who can supply hundreds of tons. I think uh, we are one of them, number one. The opportunity is like another growth engine, you are right. It's not a small opportunity. It can be even bigger than a single growth engine. So, the op because you are you don't, you're not talking about one, two, three, four, there are several products coming up in this segment of the GLP-1 units. So we see a lot of demand for our, our uh, building blocks. And the building blocks, there is always can be a value addition by going forward integration into dry peptides, dry peptides, up to at least four or five residues. That's where we see in the next two, three years, jumping with substantial added value. Yes, we may not go to the protein peptide, the 29 or 32 uh, amino acid uh, whole chain, but we can graduate to the major segment. Okay. And just uh, just to clarify, sir, I think we had mentioned in the earlier call as well, for these products, we don't need US FDA approval. So if our new capacities come on stream, we can actually start manufacturing some of these. Is that a correct assessment? As long as they are key starting materials, yes, the quality, but the qualification is very, very tough. It's not that easy. Okay. Okay. So it depends upon when, where they are adding. If you are, they are adding at the 31st uh, last amino acid, probably it needs yes, the FDA inspection. But if you are talking about the very beginning of the chain, maybe not. So whether you are get, getting qualified for starting material, case starting material, advanced, intermediate, or N minus one. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ms. Charul Agarwal from Bank of America. Please go ahead. So thank you for taking my question. Uh, continuing on the question from the previous participant regarding the peptide product, could you also provide some indicative timeline as to uh, by when can we see the monetization from these projects happening um, and where do we lie in terms of the progress? Ms. Charul, uh, if you could uh, speak a little bit louder and repeat your question, please. Yes, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Uh, so, sir, continuing on the lines of the previous question regarding the GLP-1 products, uh, sir, could you give more uh, more color on the timelines that we can look for this product? Would it be uh, a FY26 opportunity or would it come even later? And at what stage are we, are we doing? Uh, are we already said sending exhibit batches to customer or where do we lie in terms of progress over there? I think you'll see some value towards the 25 and going forward, you'll see much bigger numbers. Thank you, sir. That is helpful. Uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nithya from Bernstein. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, another follow-up question on the GLP-1 peptide opportunity. Uh, if I look at either the commercial peptides or one that's in phase three, the two that are based on a synthetic process are terzapatide and retacrutide. Uh, terzapatide, we understand that uh, there are CDMOs that have been disclosed as supporting Lily, and they're setting up substantial capacities in the range of 32,000 liters. Um, so the question is, uh, what sort of capacities is Divi's invested in? Is this something that will be part of Kakinada as well? And if you can give us a little bit of color on what sort of capacities you're investing in for the types. Thank you for uh, repeating the names of the product. Neither am allowed to say the name of the product, nor the name of the company, nor the name of the billion dollars for orders received the uh, I'm not allowed to talk about that, the names and the products. 
But what I can tell you is that they all need the building blocks and outside China there are not there is no company that can supply at this moment 100 tons of those this is where we see a great opportunity we started working from the beginning of this year so once the approvals and qualifications complete we see light towards the 25 happening and probably then on very large volumes it involves not just one step of amino acid conversion it involves coupling agents activating agents building block with protection and making from the very basic raw material that is the most important thing one can buy all of them and put together then you are not cost competitive and you can't control impurities especially in products like that doing by solid phase you know, they will be ending up with several impurities if they don't control the starting material or building blocks uh so follow up on that i fully appreciate that you already have the capabilities to uh, make and your commercializing coupling agents as well uh no. but the question my question was on your capacities to actually produce multiple fragments uh, which are chains of amino acids uh, is there any color you can provide us on the capacities you're setting up we the capacities we have already available all the reagents will be produced in kakinada or at the our unit 1 and 2 and all the building blocks including the dye type of dye can be produced in our existing facilities we do not require any additional capacity understood thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of mr anirudh shetty from solidity investment managers please go ahead hi thank you for the opportunity i had just one question uh, in our contrast media uh, i just wanted to know uh, how backward integrated are we uh, you know to what level we are we are the most backward integrated company number 1 we make from iodine iodine is the basic starting material we make from isopalic acid that is the base basic petrochemical got it thank you for answering my question thank you the next question is from the line of mr nikhil from simpl please go ahead sir yeah hi uh, good afternoon i hope i am audible yes you are audible yeah uh, just two question one is a clarification uh sir you mentioned that most of the pricing pressure we are finding is on our existing uh, molecules where we were always present uh, if you can just give some highlight that is this pricing pressure led by new capacities or new players coming in or is it still uh, inventory uh, destocking which is uh, leading to the pricing pressure and additionally what we have seen is that uh, many of the solvent and the uh, intermediate prices have been falling for last one year and uh, most companies have talked about that prices are now stabilizing at the intermediate level but still for us the prices are going down so uh, how should we understand this there is it is not from any new players or new entrants i think even in the existing players maybe so getting some stock play getting rid of the stock there are price pressures for that and i think i, I answered the same question earlier saying that once the stocks are over then people look and there is no more stock available the price of go up we have seen this happening in the last i think uh, 10 years at least two three cycles okay there are for a stable player like this 
like ours, it should not matter. Okay. We don't disappear when the price comes down and we don't appear when the price increases by 20-30%. Okay. So it's only a matter of time by the by when inventory is settled down and uh, things should improve for us. That's what we are. That's what we think based on the experience of earlier uh, cycling mechanism. Okay. And just last question. See, uh, over last two years we've been talking about sartans as an opportunity, and uh, if we see uh, in most of our facilities, we have been making sartans. Uh, not exactly as a number, but if we consider the whole sartan as a family, would it be now featuring it among the top seven or top ten product segments for us? Uh, so generally, when we say top five products contribute forty to forty-five percent of revenue, uh, would you say sartans would be now in the top ten segments for us, or just some clarity on how we have shaped up or scaled up? that opportunity i think it will be in the top 10 or in the uh, opportunity of the year oh uh, so existing revenue contribution they would be among the top 10 yes okay thanks a lot sir i'll come back thank you the next question is from the line of mr surya patra from philip capital please go ahead sir thanks for this opportunity again sir just uh, one uh, one view point that i wanted to have from you see in the recent quarter uh, we have seen uh, usfd a commissioner visiting your facility and uh, subsequently we have heard a few uh, positive statements by him about indian industry and all that so if you can just uh, comment your experience uh, of his visit and uh, and what would be the priority that they are currently looking for and uh, how would that be helpful for our uh, progressive growth that we are having currently yes it was uh, quite uh, um quite an exciting moment when the us fda commissioner visited our facilities along with uh, 12 officials from the us fda um uh, and visiting our plant touring in our plant and seeing the facilities in detail uh, all the departments definitely gave him or gave the team a better picture about how the api industry is at what kind of magnitude and the quality systems exist i think he was quite pleased now okay i'm sure he, he has gone with a good uh, feeling uh, but now we need to see it doesn't mean that you will be automatically approved or you will be you will never be inspected i think the routine business is business there will be us fda inspection and the always inspection each inspection is different but when we do our day to day production in line with the full cgmp i think in the last 20 25 years we have seen total inspection and we have gone through without any issue so it's a good opportunity for us i think it's a good feeling the world knows that he has visited us and carried some good impression okay okay uh, so sir is it is it uh, is it fair to believe that uh, india the way it is been talked about is india is positioned currently as a, a partner of choice so far as uh, let's say the uh, supply chain for the even innovative molecules are concerned for the global market and uh, uh, truly china plus one can play out in indian pharma and more importantly in the apis and intermediate space and uh, possibly we are uh, just in the uh, inflection point is that understanding can be uh, deduced from the experience whatever that you would have asked from him 
I think you are right. With all the large capacities available in India and uh, the requirements being there in US and Europe, I think uh, it's fairly to say that. Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ms. Nitya from Bernstein. Please go ahead, ma'am. Uh, hi, I just had a quick bookkeeping question. So when you when you say custom synthesis, is that are these only patent protected products that you're working with Big Pharma, or would this include any product, uh, generic product as well that you would be selling to Big Pharma? It's very difficult to say that when we enter most of the products, we enter when they are under the uh, um, still under patent, maybe just discovered or maybe just getting launched. And for a period of time, yes, they would go out of patent and some of the generic companies will enter. So we always are in the basket that some phase one, phase two, phase three compound, some launch compound, some patent just expired, but still we will be making post uh, uh, patent expiry. And sometimes it can be a generic compound from our own process, and also we will be following a, a process that the innovator wants for any particular reason. Uh, is it then fair to say that your custom synthesis to generic ratio is actually big pharma to non-big pharma ratio? No, the custom synthesis and generic ratio is about, we, we like to maintain 50-50, but it changes 60, 40, 40, 60 year, year on year, which is not in our control. Uh, no, sir. So just, uh, let's say a big pharma company comes to you and asks you to sell naproxen, which is one of your older generic products. Now, is that sale being accounted for in CS or is it accounted for in generics? It is a generic product. It is like they can shop from anywhere as long as it is USFDA inspected and after qualification. There's no difference in that. It's not it is generic. But if the big pharma comes their own product just going out of patent and they want us to produce as for their process, then it comes under uh, CDM. Custom service. All right. Uh, so one of your peers also mentioned uh, demand weakness in the segment because of inventory destocking and not and in addition to pricing pressure. Uh, so are these two linked, are these two separate, when do you see these getting sorted out in the future? I think these are uh, cyclic in nature. Every three, four years, you will have people build inventories, cannot hold, or got to dispose them, then the pricing starts going down. They will deplete these stocks. These are not the very large players. These are mid to low. And then the demand remains the same. It won't go up. But there is no product. Then the shortages happen, price goes up, then it settles down. These are, these, we have seen these cycles. It varies. One year it can be two or three ABC products, next year it can be DEF products. So, it does happen. In your experience of having seen these cycles, how long does such an inventory destocking phenomena last before demand picks up again? Not more than two years. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ms. Charu Lagarwal from Bank of America. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so this quarter, we also saw an increase in sales for the cartonoid products by around 15%. And uh, given the cartonoids were already at 90-95% capacity, would this be more uh, price-driven or, uh, or is there something else uh, that is going there? Can you please repeat? I missed the first um, sentence. So I was asking that for the cartonoid segment, uh, there was a decent 15% QOQ growth. So what was driving this growth? And given that the cartonoid segment is already operating at 90-95% capacity, 
or was it more of a pricing growth do you mean carotenoids uh, yeah the nutraceuticals the nutraceutical growth i think 10 to 15% it has been happening and there are not too many players in the product we are in in more so in the animal nutrition uh, the complex astaxanthin and uh, compound uh, we are now the getting to be we are almost the major players now okay thank you sir so another question we also saw a jump in our other expenses this quarter was it more uh, for to support r and d for the glp one products or for the other elements and uh, like do you expect these costs to sustain can you just repeat the question again i'm sorry ah uh, yes so uh, we also saw uh, some bit of a jump in the other expenses this quarter uh, so uh, could you please explain what drove the expenses and uh, uh, do we see these expenses as sustainable from here it is an increase in repairs and ex maintenance expenditure mostly and uh, it is because of, you know yet unit 1 and uh, unit 2 we did a little bit of modernization and upgradation so that is the reason okay thank you thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone the next question is from the line of mr pogas who is a retail inv investor please go ahead sir Uh, thanks for the opportunity sir uh, my question sir, is related to the contrast media division related to the mri sir sir i just want to know what is the market size complete market size and which uh, geography are we targeting that's my first question sir and the contrast media is about uh, 5 billion dollars that is the market you are talking okay. about the mri or the contrast media the contrast media for mri sir related to mri contrast media for the mri is mainly the gadolinium compound yeah sir. we are not targeting about any uh, region we only target the main innovator or innovator company so we don't okay they will market them in india us europe so okay sir we are not involved in that Sure, sir. So the reason for that question is, sir, uh, the, uh, the out of this uh, whole five billion dollars that we you mentioned, sir, the contrast with the seventy to seventy five percent market share is with the top four, and one of our Indian player is saying they're climbing. They hold a seventy percent market share in it. So, what is the opportunity that Divis as a company we are looking, sir? Is that uh, the statement that I'm making is it correct, sir? Just correct me if I'm wrong, sir. I think the five billion dollars what I mentioned is for the iodine contrast media, iodine based, whereas the MRI is gadolinium based. That is different. So I was referring to the gadolinium compound where the, the sub. supplying to the innovator or the yes you are right there are only three or four companies worldwide these contract media they do and i'm not sure whether it's 70% 80% market is with one company in india i'm not sure about that okay so the climb is uh, the 70 to 75% market share is this, with this top four companies in that 70 to 75% Uh, the four companies right they are supplying for three companies which is 70 to 70% they are supplying for it out of the 70% they are supplying 70% so and they are also climbing sir these people are not looking at an api level they are looking at the intermediate level so uh, those companies just want the intermediaries and they want to form the api on their own so are we trying to do the api here or like are we 
into the intermediaries sir because the names in our company and that companies are same when i check the product list so just little got confused there sir can you clear me there sir in the contrast media we make apis the ipam doll ios all and also we are uh, we make other contrast media for our for the innovators to do that we also make our own starting materials intermediate from iding i think i hope i have given a clear picture so i i got it sir so we are saying we are doing apis for some other companies who needs a direct api itself okay i got it sir thanks thanks for the clarification sir all the best thank you participants who wish to ask questions may press star and 1 on their touch tone phone we will wait for the question queue to assemble as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to mr satish choudhry for closing comments Thank you all for joining us today for the earnings call of Devis Laboratories Limited. In case you need any further clarification, please reach out to our investor relations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Devis Laboratories Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.